Hello my YouTube friends, it's Richard, founder of shorttermrentalsecrets.com and Airbnb Superhost. And today we have the uh, difficult task of adding value to Mary Kay. Mary Kay was kind enough to pay the $49 for her listing to be reviewed and I've taken a quick peek at it. And first off, I just have to commend you. I mean, you're doing so many things so incredibly well. Um, I think we all have a lot to learn here. And so I'm gonna try and add as much value to you so that you get your money's worth. Um, and it's probably more in the form of questions. But for everyone else, like this is an ideal listing. She's doing so many things so incredibly well. So let's go through and review. We're gonna do it in six steps. The first is where we're gonna look at the title. Then we take a look at the photos and the order of those photos. The third is the thumbnail that she's selected. The fourth is the description, how she describes the property. Then we'll take a look at the listing uh, reviews, the people that have stayed. What do they have to say about Mary Kay as a host in her place? And then finally, we'll take a look at the pricing. So let's get into the very first thing, which is the title. And here, Mary Kay, you've selected something that I think has a lot of meaning to you, and it's actually descriptive, but I don't think it sells the dream. And so I think that the best opportunity for you, based on all the photos and everything, and we'll talk about those, is probably the headline. The title itself uh, has room for improvement. We will find out as we look through the rest of the listing that there is a reason this is the alpaca cottage. Uh, gracious comfort, I think, is um, nice and something that we all appreciate. An eclectic charm, that's a little bit off-putting. Um, and I don't find your place eclectic at all. I find it really, really uh, desirable. I find it very luxurious. I find it very serene. I find it very peaceful. I find this working farm component of it where you talk about the alpaca. Um, extremely interesting and so I kind of wonder if the title is leading to the fact and we'll talk about it a little later that it looks like a, a lot of your calendar is open it could be the location it could be the pricing it could just be the title because everyone who's staying at your place really seems to love it so um, I would try and change the title and I would include things like um, a serene oasis slash organic working farm or you know that whole like farm to table movement people are really into knowing where everything is coming from you might even highlight that you have a working farm you have the alpacas and the roosters and the hens and you've got the eggs and you've got all that other amazing stuff but gracious comfort doesn't mention it cottage doesn't include that and eclectic charm certainly doesn't include that. So I think if we can sell the dream of people coming to this serene working farm, um, you might get people to visit that aren't staying in Decatur or looking for Decatur or attending you know, Emory. So I think this is maybe more of a uh, vacation opportunity or a retreat opportunity than it is a traditional college visiting opportunity. So I think that there's a little bit of work that can be done on the title. If you want to go ahead and, and um, post it when we give you this link, feedback, ideas, I'll be happy to you know, go back and forth with you until we find a, a working title. And as often is the case, I don't know that we're going to nail it immediately. You might have to do A-B testing and have two or three different titles that you test until we see which one's getting the most clicks. And then we don't really care about clicks as much as we care about conversions. Which title is getting us most bookings? So I think that's an opportunity for you. Turning to the photos, I mean, they're spectacular. Honestly, um, you know exactly what it is that you're doing. I don't think I've ever seen a night shot as a title shot. It looks like it's like um, low exposure, slow. Uh, the the uh, sky is lit up in blue and the orange and pink in the sky and the night lights and the path lights. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think you've done a terrific job with all your photos. I'm not gonna go ahead and comment on all of them because they're a lot and they're beautiful, but I am gonna go ahead and and scroll through them so that the viewers of this video get the benefit of your terrific photography. The other thing that I want to highlight is you've done a great job of very lengthy descriptions that are different for each photo. You're telling the story. You're not just putting the photo up there. You're talking about warm, welcoming, and wonderful, tucked in a grove of Georgia pines and surrounded by perennial vegetable and natural dye gardens. The Decatur Alpaca Cottage offers gracious comfort with high-end amenities. Okay, so for that title, this whole thing about tucked in a grove of Georgia pines and surrounded by perennial vegetable natural dye gardens, work towards that. That's what you're selling, right? The fact that it's called Alpaca Cottage, 
not so meaningful and you seem to like the gracious comfort i'm not opposed to it but i think it's not the best place in the title so this is absolutely beautiful uh, i love the the tray with it looks like some sort of little snacks and the windows are open and the light is great and everything is just clean and perfect and that's a constant theme throughout i love the drone shot uh, i've encouraged them in the past but here you can see just how well kept pardon me just how well kept and well manicured the landscaping is it's clear that you take great pride in this and um, that's important um, again you use the exact same sort of wording here i would change it a little bit talk about what we're looking at a quarter acre a half acre um, organic i don't know compost whatever it is that you're using and doing talk about that you're going to attract people that want to come to a working farm that uses natural compost biodegradable horse manure whatever it is that you do talk about that not that it's nestled we already covered that um, here's a um, alpaca which is great and playful this breakfast looks unbelievable i mean it's just great now what i'm not clear about is do you offer that for a guest if, if you don't it's a little bit misleading if you do then you definitely want to highlight the fact that like that's available at an additional cost or whatever um, i mean it's just spectacularly decorated very well appointed very clean i love the barn door um, i love the paint over here you're attracting a certain type of person they're going to appreciate it i love the throw i love the way it's folded i like the way it's over the ottoman i mean you clearly have an eye for decoration and for the style and it's working really well um, i love the fact that you've got the light plate painted and the light itself i mean just all these little details that many people don't get um, you're nailing and i just think it's great so i want to highlight that for other people i love the fact that you've got five stars on everything and i don't know if you did this before but we've been suggesting in our videos previously to go ahead and you know boast a little bit talk about like what this is and and show people what other people think um, the living room is amazing i love it uh, the one thing that i might add is something with a little bit of color perhaps either on the end table here or on the center here it looks like you have a fern down low and then some dried plants up here but maybe a, a you know if i had to be super uh critical some greenery somewhere other than down low would be helpful i love the fact that you talk about that you've got roku and flat screen and it's an 1800s porch i mean you're telling a story it's really compelling i absolutely love it heck i might even come down to decatur just to check out this place because it's really spectacular um, the kitchen is great. It's very well appointed. I'm not exactly sure what's past here. Um, it looks like the, the door is um, frosted so you can't see through it. Um, it looks like maybe just a path, but you might want to just say like your own private path leading to whatever. But um, very nicely appointed. This is a beautiful photo with the flowers. I assume these are local flowers from like your garden. If, if they are, highlight that. Um, the cheese course looks great, the wine, the decanter. Again, you really clearly know what it is that you're doing. Um, and this is fabulous. I'm not sure that the cork in the uh, wine bottle really adds any value. If I were going to shoot it again, which I don't think you need to, I would probably remove it. Um, more alpacas, and then there's you know, more working farm. You talk about the names of people, and it's evident that you really care. And you're attracting the right people, right? People that are going to be drawn to this are really going to like all these photos, and it's great. Um, shearing day before and after, it's interesting. You might want to include when shearing happens. If I was a parent and I was traveling and I wanted to teach my children about it, that might be like a really interesting trip. Like, we're going to go to Decatur. We're going to go to this working alpaca farm. They do the shearing on whatever, the third week in January. I'm just making this up. Probably not, but whenever it is, talk about it so that people can say this is what i want to do and this is what's amazing here's pretty much the exact same photo taken during the day and while it's an absolutely lovely photo the magic really occurred at that like the right time that you took that night shot with the the garden lit up and everything um, and it, you can just see it i mean it's a great photo i love this photo but the other one is just special and spectacular uh, dick jr is a french black copper moran one of the more colorful chickens on the farmlet he sure is or i guess it's he colorful the one question that i have when i look at this and i looked in your description so i'll just cover it here um, 
you know, I live in New York City. We don't really have chickens and hens and roosters and stuff like that. Uh, but when I've traveled and I've traveled an awful lot, they generally tend to make a lot of noise at like 500, at 0500, right? That's sort of like that whole rooster thing. So are these guys waking everybody up? Or if not, if they're not roosters or they, whatever, they're kept way off premises, you might want to include that in the description and maybe even here because as interesting as it is, if I'm coming out there for a retreat and relaxation, I don't know that I want to even contemplate being woken up at five in the morning by Dick Jr. or Pepper. And, you know, again, I'm showing my ignorance, maybe they're nothing, but I think highlighting it and assuming nothing, making sure people feel comfortable would be great. This guy's super cool, poofy peckerhead. That's my guy. Um, the Charlie Chicks, the eggs are amazing. They're fresh eggs available for purchase according to availability. That's super cool. I love that. I love the, the sticker and the name and the different colors. I mean, you're really, really doing it. This photo, uh, I think, could be improved. It's, it's not in focus. It's very hard to read. Um, so just shoot another one. Uh, here's a little Eden Kitchen. Uh, you're using Myers Clean Stuff, which we recommend and we highlight and we recommend that. So that's good. Um, everything looks really nice and clean here. And I don't have a lot to add. A, a quiet writer's retreat. I would love to come down there and write. Here it is at night. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Here you do talk about the sounds of the chickens going to roost. Um, again, there's a fine line between something being really like nice and lovely for a short period of time and or it becoming annoying or disturbing. And so you may be immune to it. What you find to be really uh, soothing and them going to roost might be really disturbing to somebody who's looking to write a book. Uh, so you might need to quantify that a little bit more or address the fact that they're not roosters or I don't really know how you're going to do it. But again, you're trying to attract people. And while I'm drawn to this working farm nature of it, uh, it would be helpful for me to know that I could like sleep in. This photo I think is actually your weakest photo where the colors are a little muted and overexposed. Um, but I get the point and it doesn't detract from it. But if you ever had butterflies again, you could probably reshoot this one. Um, and it's just, you know, the clematis and the Mexican petunia. It's lovely. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love this porch. Um, the screened in porch, you talk about morning coffee. If you were going to shoot it again, let's get some morning coffee out there. Let's get, uh, I don't know, a, a magazine or something, a book, a throw. I don't know. It's just, but it's gorgeous. I mean, I can totally see myself having a cup of coffee there. Um, and this breakfast place is fantastic. I love the wrought iron, the door and the uh, chandelier, just super cool. Um, and then you talk about the rocking chairs. This is new. I love this. Uh, this is, I guess, a greenhouse. I don't know what you, what you uh, have growing in there, but you might want to talk about the greenhouse a little bit. And again, if you were going to shoot this again, I might set the table a little bit or put the wine glasses out or cheese course or something just to show it like in, in action a little bit. Um, and then this photo, I'm not sure. It's clear that you know what you're doing. You've got unbelievable camera equipment and gear, but showing the photo of the camera on the tripod is a little bit odd and you don't actually show the photo of the table dressed. So those two, I think you could work a little bit. And then here we talk about the organic heritage vegetables and fruits and flowers and so on. It looks like it's sort of between seasons. You might want to take this again when it's in full bloom and there's all sorts of stuff and then talk about what it is that you're looking at. And you know, if somebody could taste one of your tomatoes or something, you might want to highlight that. Again, I really love the, the um, the drone shots and I love the fact that you're leading and suggesting that they could use it for an intimate wedding or an event or anything like that. If you do do those, we released a video recently that said to charge more for those. It's perfectly fine. People that are throwing a wedding are going to be able to afford a significant bump up versus what, you know, two people coming to stay at your place would afford. And there's a lot more damage and wear and tear and, and risk and liability. So be sure that you're being smart and profitable. Um, this photo is out of focus as well. Uh, and you know, I think it adds value that it shows that you care and you're a host. It's very difficult to read the writing here, as you can see, like it's almost impossible. Um, so I don't know if you have to crop the photo a little bit and that's it. So in a nutshell, the photos are fantastic. I absolutely love them. I had to really struggle to find, uh, anything to add value, 
but we found a few things and you know given the quality of the rating I'm, I'm impressed that he's even able to help and I hope it is helpful so let's turn to the thumbnail I love the thumbnail you nailed the thumbnail I want to go stay there like literally I'm gonna pack my bag and I'm coming down and I'm gonna check out your working farm and the alpaca and have a cup of tea on that back porch and the thumbnail with the sky and the night lights and everything else is perfect I wouldn't change a thing great job turning to the description so the first thing I want to say is I love the way that you highlight the proximity and it's just far enough away. It's sort of painting that picture convenient to Emery. We talked about sort of telling people like where you are and when they might use you. I'm not sure what CDC is or Mercer. Uh, maybe they have meaning if I was staying in those locations likely, but don't assume anything, right? Like just you might want to spell it out or explain what it is. Uh, you've talked about the luxuries and the bedding and the fully stocked kitchen, the charm, um, and I think these are all great. I absolutely love the description. You also talk about who it's good for. It's perfect for couple and business travelers, film and intimate events and weddings. It's friendly. Uh, I think it's really, really uh, well thought out. It's evident you've put a lot of time and energy into it. It's evident that you're uh, a skilled writer and you know what you're trying to paint. Um, so that's fantastic. You talk about new improvements. I think that's really cool. Uh, but I might put this sort of specific stuff about your working farm <coughs> higher up, right? Um, it's really important. Somebody who does not want to be near or around alpacas or the different, you know, chickens and so on, or doesn't care about the vegetables or anything else, may not be happy there. As comfortable as it is, it's pretty evident that that's, you know, all-encompassing and you're, you can't really escape it. So you don't want them there. And the flip side is, somebody like me that finds that super interesting and intriguing, I want more of that information. I want even more detail. I want to know what kind of varieties, how many different types of tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, we won the prize, here's a photo of the tomatoes, like really play that up. You do a great job with the alpacas and the chickens and so on. You don't do, I don't think, enough with the farm to table aspect of it. There's a huge movement. So many people are interested in like eating good food and not that they're going to eat your food, but they're connecting with somebody who cares about that same sort of thing. So this sort of paragraph where you talk about the azaleas, the hydrangeas, uh, the various gardens, let's expand on it and move that up, I think. Here we go. Working urban farmlet, which is a small farm. Um, and once again, we talk much more about the the animals than we do anything else. Um, it's a very thorough listing, it's a very detailed listing, it talks about the size of the um, memory foam mattress, cool aloe gel memory foam mattress, that sounds quite comfortable. We talk about the vintage and it's just, you know, it's, it's thoughtful. Unfortunately, I don't think people are going to read this much, but between the photos that they do read and your descriptions underneath that, and so on, I think they'll get the, the, the gist of it. And this is sort of my point, like this to me needs to be way higher up. Our hens lay daily for the majority of the year, so we can usually accommodate guest requests for fresh organic eggs. A guest said these eggs are so delicious you can taste the love. That's about, I don't know, three pages into the description. That needs to be up front. Um, who doesn't like eggs? And even if you don't eat eggs, you wanna know that there's like cool eggs and other guests love them. So anyway, I think that this is fantastic. I think you've done really well. I think you're smart to include all of your social media stuff. I haven't seen what you do there, but I'm gonna check it out. I think if, the, if you keep interesting things socially there, that's actually a really great opportunity for you to grow your business and get repeat business. Um, and I think it's super cool. Interaction with the guests I get. Uh, other things to note, I, again, you just do a very, very thoughtful time the cottage is very well equipped for leisure business travel. A recent guest commented, anytime we thought of something we needed, we realized you'd already thought of it. You go on about all the different coffees. I mean, it's, you take this really seriously. It's really impressive. You uh, are a super host, I believe. Yep, you're a super host and you deserve it. You're doing great work. However, I think there's a little bit of room for improvement and I'm gonna get to that in a second. Here, um, when we take a look at your reviews, 
Five stars on everything, I'm not surprised at all. I love the fact that you respond to every single one and with personality and with specifics and you mention them by name and they're long and detailed. Uh, so that's fantastic and everybody just loves everything. So I'm not surprised by it in the least. Um, you know exactly what it is that you're doing and it looks like you're doing really well. In September you had four people post reviews and in October you've had a couple, three already, four already. So I don't know whether these are coming in, you know, uh, a week or two delayed, but it seems like you've been really busy in the fall, which is fantastic. And then it looks like the summer um, may have been slower. And I just don't know if that's a seasonal thing. August was good. I don't know if that's a seasonal thing or you guys took it off or you were doing the construction. Um, but it seems to me like you could be busier and that's where we're turning to now, which is the pricing of $100 per night. Uh, when I take a look at your availability, it looks like October sold out and or blocked. November uh, looks like you have a fair amount of availability and you're clearly using some sort of smart pricing. I don't know if it's beyond pricing or if it's Airbnb, but you're clearly using something and that I think is really intelligent. And December is wide open and January is partially blocked. I don't know if you've started blocking because then in February you have no availability, in March none, and so on. So it's possible that you're only taking say 90 days of bookings, which may suit you. I'm not sure that there's a real benefit to doing that, but if that's the way you like to do it, that's fine. But it strikes me as um, an opportunity to have more business, <clears throat> excuse me, in the months of November and December. And what I can't tell is whether it's your pricing is off, like is this the slow season and you need to reduce your pricing? Uh, do people not come here during this period of time? If you are close to Emory and Mercer and CDC and whatever else, and it's also a great getaway from those, you know, from the city life or whatever, maybe you need to shift your marketing so that in the slower periods of November and December and January, uh, you're getting business. You should at least be selling out on the weekends and maybe you will, but it seems to me like this is a fantastic place. You're not necessarily getting as much business as I think you should, and um, I'm not sure why. Um, I think you should really be doing a lot more. A couple of thoughts on the pricing also, as I try and find it here, is uh, I'm not a huge fan of flexible cancellations, but if it works for you, then that's fine. I've said this before, uh, I'm not a huge fan of weekly discounting at all and I'm even less of a fan of monthly discounting. If you're in the short-term rental space, don't be looking to rent for a month. You're just giving away money out of your pocket. That discount is your profit. Literally, your costs of doing business are the exact same. If you give somebody a 33% discount, you don't get a 33% discount on your expenses. Your cost of goods sold is the exact same, yet your revenue is lower, therefore your profits are lower. Somebody who wants to stay at a working farm and write a book is likely able to afford the entire amount or they'll be there for two weeks and somebody else will come in for two weeks. So since you're doing it for profit, I don't recommend that. I think your cleaning fee is light. Um, I don't know how long it takes to clean this little cottage, but if you figure $20 an hour, $15, $20 an hour is the working sort of wage, uh, you're saying that this takes three to four hours and I'd be surprised if you could clean that entire house and make the beds as impeccable as it is and as clean as it shows in that amount of time. So I think you have room for cleaning fees. I love the fact that you charge more, $25 per night after two guests. I think that's really smart. And the security deposit seems a little bit light to me, but you know, I'm not gonna get too hung up on that. Anyway, Mary Kay, you know exactly what it is that you're doing. You're killing it, you're doing a great job. I'd like to see you get even more business. I'd like to see you uh, get rid of your discount so you make more profit. I'd like to see you take, if you had the interest uh, and you seem to be like into real estate and farms and decor and decorating and renovating and building new areas, I'd love to see you expand your business. You have a real talent here and I think if you were to take this one Airbnb and start to save the income from it and put it towards a second Airbnb, that would be a fantastic opportunity for you and your family. Again, it may not be something you're interested in, but clearly you have the skill set and the talent and I would encourage you to pursue it. So. I hope you found this helpful. Um, this is one of the most thorough and, and really perfect listings I've seen thus far. So kudos to you, Mary Kay. And um, for the rest of us, this is something that we can like shoot for. And if you want your listing reviewed, go ahead and leave us a comment below. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that you will like the video. And most importantly, if you haven't subscribed to the video, let's see, I can't even say it. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do me a favor. I'd really appreciate that. Until then, happy hosting.